This is our 23rd year. Uh, we recognize uh, industries, uh, municipalities, universities, anybody that's got a, a project that's worthy of a leadership award. Uh, we had a, a major composting uh, entity. We had a company that actually produces concrete, but they use a water treatment system to knock out the, the chlorides or the, or the high uh, uh, alkaline uh, entities and produces clean water to the discharge. Uh, we had the Port of New Orleans that actually uh, uses uh, alternative fuel trucks on their, on their docks. So it's, it's a, a, an array of, of projects that will qualify for some type of long-term sustainability or reducing some type of greenhouse footprint or something that will, will, will qualify as, as an environmental sustainability project. Thank you all for um, coming today out for our 2018 Environmental Leadership Program Awards. I'm Denise Bennett, the Deputy Secretary for the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. I will turn it over immediately to Dr. Chuck Carr Brown, Secretary for the Department of Environmental Quality. Good morning, that was quick. <laughs> Good morning, how's everybody? Well, first of all, I wanna welcome you to uh, the Galvez building. This is where we do all of our business. Uh, the room that you're in now is, is what's called a, kind of our control center. When, uh, when something happens, natural disaster, man-made disaster, we create a incident command, and this is sort of where we are. All those walls are gone, and we've got uh, phones, and we've got equipment, and we've got people. As a matter of fact, after Hurricane Katrina, we had uh, over 100 EPA responders that they immediately came in, and there were no hotel rooms, and they all slept in here for almost a week. Uh, so this is our control center. And this is what we do uh, all of our business when it comes to response. Um, the ELP program is something that's near and dear to me because um, you folks are what I would consider the leaders. Uh, before I talk about that a little bit more, I want to make sure you know who we are. And I've got some of my assistant secretaries here. If you need assistance, you will know you can put a, a name with a face. So I'll start with uh, Denise Bennett. She's my deputy secretary. Uh, Roger Jingles is the Assistant Secretary of the Office of Environmental Assessment. Uh, Lourdes Ildurate is the Assistant Secretary of the Office of Enforcement and Compliance. You don't want to see her. Uh, Elliot Vega is the Assistant Secretary of the Office of Environmental Services. All the permitting is through his office, air, water, waste. We've got uh, Greg Langley is a Press Secretary. Uh, we've got several other DQ employees in the, in the audience. If you don't raise your hands or stand up, why don't you do that? Everybody else? They're around. Hmm? Oh, okay. And I got my attorney back there. I never go anywhere without him. Herman Robinson is a general counsel. Raise your hand. Never go anywhere without him. Um, so you guys, as I said, are considered the, the leaders. You go above and beyond. When I look at the... Uh, the mission of LDQ and what my vision was when I started, I had a vision that I wanted to be, be deemed and viewed as an environmental regulatory agency that went above and beyond. I didn't want to just have everybody follow the rules and regs that were written, but I want to be seen when I'm done and, and I'm gone that they, they mentioned this era as the era that LDQ went above and beyond when it comes to environmental regulation and oversight. I've always told anybody that was regulated by us that, um, there's a purse down here, that um, if you're not unwilling or unable to comply with the rules and regs, we're gonna do what we can to make sure you get there. But I also have uh, a group of guys that, that are my criminal investigators, and I told them the very first week that if somebody's out there and they're willfully violating, then when you go and arrest them, um, I'll sleep well that night because it doesn't bother me. So if you're unwilling, if you're not unwilling or you're not unable, we're going to make sure you get into compliance. But then when you go that, that extra mile and decide that you want to tell DEQ to go to heck, I also got my guys going to come look for you. So our mission is protecting human health and the environment. And I changed it because it also used to have a tagline that says, why we encourage economic development. You as environmental leadership participants and leaders, if you protect human health and the environment, you're going to make money. I don't have to have that in my mission to encourage economic development. 
We all go to Whole Foods because we think that that loaf of bread is a little bit better than the one you get at Walmart. You pay a little bit more for it because you think it was, it was treated a little bit better. So that's our mission. We protect human health and environment. You do that, you're going to make money. This is our 23rd year, as I mentioned before. Uh, I want to congratulate all of you uh, for participating this year. I want to encourage you to go back and tell all the folks, because when we present these awards to you, you take that photo. Um, years ago, I worked for ExxonMobil, a long time ago. And so two or three years ago, they were in here in your seat, and they got an award. And so I stood there and took a picture with about 10 of them. Um, and so they invited our exec staff to come tour their site. As a matter of fact, I know we got the Port of New Orleans in here too, right? Uh, we're gonna come down, I've uh, been invited to come tour. When time permits, I will be there. But I went to tour Exxon, and guess what? The first thing I saw, that picture is right there. You know, because that picture says something. It says to all your customers that you've gone above and beyond to protect the environment. Uh, even if it's nothing more than a photo, because all your projects are worthy. Uh, we know there's a legislative session going on now. It is intense. Uh, we normally would have our uh, Senate uh, Environment Chairman and our House Environment Chairman here with us. They are, they are hot and heavy. Uh, I've spent more time in the legislature the last two weeks than I have in quite a while. And I'm talking all day, two or three days a week, because they're trying to get all the bills heard and then heard in the House and then move to the Senate and then moved to the Senate floor, and it's just not enough time to get them going. I had one bill that was stalled last week. They want to push it to another committee, and there's not enough time uh, because the governor wants to stop May 4th and go through uh, a, a, a sixth special session. So if you keep in mind that we've been here for two and a half years, we've had five special sessions and three regular sessions. That's, that is, I, I think it's unheard of, and now they're going for that sixth uh, special session just so we can balance the budget. So, not to prolong your, your awards, I want to thank you again for uh, your commitment to the environment. Uh, sustainability is always uh, what we have to keep in mind as we move forward. You know, when uh, the Trump administration took over, everybody asked, what's going to happen to, to, to Louisiana? What are you going to do? I said, well, first of all, we are going to do whatever is right for Louisiana. And anytime you try to change a policy, it's all like hitting the brakes on a train. You know, it's going to take a mile or two before you stop. And then when you try to reverse that policy, you know, it's going to be election time again. So we're going to do what's right for Louisiana. We're going to always continue to protect human health and environment. Um, part of my philosophy is you have access to the decision maker, which is me and my staff. Even if we have to tell you no, we're going to give you an opportunity to, to make your case, but we're going to move forward with a decision that hopefully you trust. So First, uh, we would like to present awards to and recognize some of the new members. Some of these new members um, also have projects. Uh, we encourage you all to share with your peers uh, about the membership. Uh, go on our website. It's purely voluntary. Um, and. Um, our first is going to be compost, New Orleans waste, our compost now. They came on as a new member in 2017, and they also have a project. <laughs> we'll hear more about their project. Thank you. We also have Diamond Green Diesel LLC as a new member. We will definitely. It doesn't cost anything to become a new member. We have a Lafarge Wholesome. I had, to, I had to learn how to pronounce the name. <laughs> Lafarge Wholesome. 
they do have a project, so we will hear more. And then we have the Lake Pontchartrain Basin Foundation as a new member of 2017. Thank you all again, and please share with your peers. It is completely free to join as a member. Okay, the first award that we want to give out um, are recognition awards. And the first award is going to Alliance Compressors. They are an air conditioning compressor manufacturer located in Natchitoches, Louisiana, and they employ approximately 475 people. They are being awarded the ELP Large Business Recognition Award in Pollution Prevention. Alliance Compressors removed 83 electrical fans and replaced them with oil coolers. They implemented this project with the goal of energy conservation and efficiency in mind for their operations and ultimately reduce the plant's carbon footprint. The removal of the electric fan motors produced 11,300 per year in electrical cost savings for the plant and eliminated 154 tons of carbon dioxide. So please join in congratulating Alliance Compressors for their project, Scroll TTP Hydraulic Oil Coolers Project. The composting network is located in New Orleans, Louisiana, and their business is to pick up food waste material and turn it into organic plant food. Their mission is to build a compost awareness movement to reduce unnecessary dumping of food resources into urban landfills that harm our environment. The composting network of New Orleans is being awarded the ELP Small Business Recognition Award in Pollution Prevention. Last year in New Orleans, where 75% of waste is food waste, one third of area hotel and tourism business were given a presentation about the value and need for food composting by someone within their network. Some of the compost partners to date are Whole Foods, Hyatt Regency, Liberty's Kitchen, Sheraton Hotels, the Convention Center, Couchon, um, Croker Elementary School, Tulane, Loyola, and Riley Food among others. Please join in congratulating Composting Network on reducing pre and post consumed food resources from urban landfills. Next. Next in the recognition category, we have the City of West Monroe. City of West Monroe is being awarded the ELP Municipality Recognition Award in Pollution Prevention. The West Monroe The West Monroe Wastewater Treatment Plant Solar Farm consists of 880 solar panels located on 1.5 acres at the city's sewer plant. It supplies as much as 300 kilowatts of electricity to the wastewater reuse facility. This international award-winning facility recycles wastewater and sends it to the nearby paper mill. This process replaces nearly 5 million gallons of water daily that was previously drawn from the Sparta Aquifer, North Louisiana's primary source of drinking water. Producing over 550 megawatt hours of electricity per year, the solar farm will reduce the facility's electrical consumption by over 20 percent, thereby reducing carbon dioxide emissions by over 400 metric tons per year. It is currently the largest municipal solar facility in the state. This project was made possible, may I mention, by a grant from LDEQ's Clean Water State Revolving Loan Fund. Please join in congratulating the city of West Monroe.
So let, let me tell you about this this project. I actually went up to West Monroe about a month or so ago, and you you walk through that solar farm, and so when you when you look at this, you can imagine one of these being in every neighborhood. Every if we start to develop, every neighborhood can have a lot in it with solar a solar farm that can power the uh, houses in that in that uh, in that neighborhood. You can, when the sun came out, you can hear them all kicking in. It runs their wastewater treatment plant. Now keep in mind, that wastewater treatment plant, which is right there, graphics packaging. Graphics packaging was taking 10 million gallons a day from the Sparta Aquifer. They treated the wastewater to the tune of 5 million gallons a day and to food grade quality, because that's what they're, they're making. And they sent it to graphic packaging so it's a, it's a double whammy. We got clean water they're making that you can actually drink. Uh, and a solar powered farm that powers that wastewater treatment plant. So it is a, it is a leader and it's very deserving. So as we all think about how we want to develop and what we want to do with our, our companies, utilizing solar power alternative energy is something I'm very keen on. So come visit with us. We have some money we can loan you. Can't give it to you, we can loan it to you at a very low rate. But these are the kind of projects that we, we, we encourage. Sustainability is what I'm talking about. Thank you. Next we have in the recognition category, Port of New Orleans. The Port of New Orleans, our Port Nola, <laughs> is a deep draft multi-purpose port at the center of the world's busiest port system, Louisiana's Lower Mississippi River. Port Nola is being awarded the ELP Municipality Recognition Award in Pollution Prevention for the Clean Truck Replacement Initiative Program, or simply Clean Trip. Port Nola's Clean Trip Project used federal and state clean diesel grants to voluntarily improve air quality by replacing old diesel cargo trucks with new, cleaner burning models. Eligible truck owners were able to receive up to 35000 or half of the cost of a new truck, or the, whichever was the, the lesser, towards the replacement. Forty trucks were replaced with cleaner burning engines, resulting in a 93 percent reduction in nitrogen oxides and 96 percent reduction in particulate uh, matter emissions. These are indeed significant air emissions reductions. Clean Trip has also supported local small businesses. Over 90% of the participants in the program were single owner operators and minority owned businesses. With this project, over 2.4 million was invested in local air quality improvements. Please join in congratulating again the Port of New Orleans for its Clean Trips project. I tell you about Volkswagen 7 and how we're following suit with what they're doing and putting it all before we leave. Okay? Next, we have New Orleans Sewerage and Water Board. The Sewerage and Water Board of New Orleans is being awarded the ELP Municipality Recognition Award in Pollution Prevention and Environmental Ordinance for two project submittals. The first project um, is the Enforcement Through Partnerships programs. It brings together an array of government agencies including LDH, DEQ, and the City of New Orleans. The other is the Fats, Oils, and Grease program, also known as FOG. With this program, it works to increase the effectiveness of regulations by applying a proactive approach and by focusing on the largest sources of sewer clogging grease, and those are the food establishments. Through a con <clears throat> combination of education, permitting, and enforcement, food establishments are tracked and brought into greater compliance with the Sewerage and Water Board plumbing code. The Enforcement Partnership Program and FOG Program through different vehicles are successful in decreasing illicit discharges and sanitary sewer overflows. In doing so, these two programs uphold local 
public health and ensure the effectiveness of New Orleans' crucial wastewater and drainage infrastructure. Please join in congratulating New Orleans Sewage and Water Board for the Enforcement Through Partnership and FOG program. Outstanding program, outstanding program. Look, you know we had a, a contract with the, the DPW and Sewage and Water Board to clean the drains. We had 93,000 pounds of Mardi Gras bees at the drains. 93,000 pounds. Okay, so mm -hmm. let it roll. <laughs> okay, next we'll have um, the Achievement Awards. First we have Fort Polk. The United States Army owns and operates the Joint Readiness Training Center, or JRTC, and Fort Polk installation located near the communities of Leesville and DeRitter, Louisiana. The JRTC and Fort Polk is an installation that provides for the quality of life for over 135 soldiers, civilians, retirees, and their families. The Fort Polk Environmental Division is being awarded the ELP Federal Facility Achievement Award in Pollution, Pre Pollution Prevention. The JRTC and Fort Polk provide state-of-the-art training facilities for soldiers and has an annual economic impact of over $1.4 billion. The Fort Polk Zero, Net Zero Waste Program, or NZW, has made tremendous strides in pollution prevention and waste reduction, setting the direction as one of the U.S. Army's six pilot net zero facilities. NZW aims to reduce waste through a reduction of consumables, reuse, recycling, and energy recovery. The goal is to minimize the amount of material that goes to the landfill and other waste management facilities. Examples of Fort Polk achievements include a 94% decrease in the amount of hazardous waste generated over the last 15 years. Fort Polk currently diverts 50% of non-hazardous solid waste, meaning 50% of all waste generated is reused, recycled, or used for energy purposes. They attribute their success of Fort Polk's NZW program to their facilities and support staff. Various facilities are in operation across the installation to ready materials for recycled commodities and reuse supplies. A team is in place to ensure everything runs smoothly. The team works to provide education, outreach, and support to approximately 31,000 people who work on the installation. The team works to ensure processes are in place and that those processes are utilized and constantly improved. Again, please help us in congratulating Fort Polk Environmental Division on their net zero waste program. Next we have Diamond Green Diesel LLC and Plaquemines Processing and Recovery LLC. Diamond Green is being awarded the ELP Large Business Achievement Award in Pollution Prevention. Diamond implemented a pollution prevention program to decrease the amount of gums. Gums are a waste product, um, are a byproduct of their operations. They're decreasing the amount of gums are waste disposed in landfills. In 2017, 46% of the gums waste produced at the green diesel plant, which are about 13,000 tons, were sent to the Plaquemines Processing and re Recovery for Recycling. Via a three-phase centrifuge pr 
process, PPR was able to recover approximately 90% of the gum's waste they received from the green diesel plant as recycled biofuel, oil, or clean water. The remaining 10% of the gum's waste was sent to PPR to landfill in solid cake form. Together, they reduced the amount of waste sent to, land, to the landfill by 12,000 tons in 2017 so that they can handle more gums waste from the green diesel plant. Waste reduction qualities are expected to increase as both facilities expand. Furthermore, there's an added environmental benefit from reduced truck travel and, and because of the distance traveled now. So please join in congratulating both Diamond Green Diesel LLC and Plaquemines Processing and Recovery for the collaborative effort in significantly reducing waste to landfills. Next, LaForge is being awarded the ELP Large Business Achievement Award in Pollution Prevention. It is typical of concrete production plants for processed water to contain high levels of total suspended solids, or TSS, and high pH due to the presence of cement powder. In 2016, LaForge discovered a new, safer wastewater treatment which injected carbon dioxide <clears throat> instead of sulfuric acid to not only lower pH but also weigh solids down and allow them to drop out of suspension. LaForge is excited to report that all water samples have exceeded discharge monitoring requirements and have done so without using dangerous sulfuric acid. By using carbon dioxide instead of sulfuric acid, LaForge has reduced risk by eliminating the potential for spills to the environment and safety risks to employees who handle the acid. The carbon dioxide is filled by NUCO2 using a telemetric system which allows them to know exactly how much carbon dioxide is left in the system and when they need to refill the tank. Unlike the sulfuric acid tote, which needs to be disposed of frequently to ensure integrity, the carbon dioxide tank is reused which helps keep materials out of landfills. The effectiveness of this project is measured through analytical analysis of TSS and pH. A typical range of TSS in processed water contained on site would be greater than 100 milligrams and would have a pH near 11. No processed water is allowed to discharge from the site unless the pH is between 6 and 9 uh, standard units and the TSS is under 45 milligrams per liter. By utilizing the Fort Trans carbon dioxide water treatment system, LaForge has not exceeded any regulatory limits. Please join in congratulating LaForge Wholesome on their carbon dioxide water treatment project. Jefferson Parish is being awarded the ELP Municipality Achievement Award in Community Environmental Outreach for their Educational Sewer Science Workshops programs. The goal of the Educational Sewer Science Workshop programs is to educate high school, area high school students about water treatment processes using an interdisciplinary microbiology, chemistry, physics, and environmental curriculum designed to stress the importance of pollution prevention in high school students. Over the five to seven days of the lab, students make wastewater, clean it through a series of physical, chemical, and biological treatment processes, and test it for various parameters. The success of this project is measured by an increased public awareness of the environmental consequences related to specific activities that contribute to stormwater pollution. The project provides a fundamental understanding of critical water infrastructure to young people on the cusp of adulthood. Last year, they worked with four high schools, including approximately 100 students and five science educators, and received enough funding through a grant to produce both teacher and student manuals to last at least 
the next 15 years, including outreach educational material for the entire community. This effort also rises to meet the new science standard based on phenomenal learning. Please join in congratulating Jefferson Parish Community Environmental Outreach on investing in education and educating our children uh, on protecting our environment. State University Campus Sustainability. The mission of LSU Campus Sustainability is to enable the university to become more efficient and environmentally responsible in all of its activities and operations, and to educate students, faculty, staff, and visitors about ways in which they can incorporate sustainable living and recycling into their daily lives and activities. LSU Campus Sustainability is being awarded the ELP University Achievement Award in Pollution Prevention for three projects. LSU held its first ever Bike Month in November 2017 to encourage alternative transportation and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. LSU Bike Month was a great success with more than 100 students actively participating, resulting in over 2,000 biked miles in and around the university in the month of November. This resulted in the avoidance of 101 pounds of carbon dioxide, or 51 tons of carbon dioxide. This is the equivalent of taking 11 passenger vehicles off the road for a year, and the equivalent of burning 5,700 gallons of gasoline. LSU partnered with CACRC and LSU Property Management in February to divert 4.2 tons of electronic waste from landfills. Examples of items collected included old computers, printers, fax machines, CDs, phones, servers, etc. The 4.2 tons of material collected in total for this event has a greenhouse emissions equivalent of removing nearly 17 passenger vehicles from the road for one year and powering 25 homes for one year with electricity. And their third project, um, LSU held a spring greening day and sustainability expo in April 2017. Students, staff, and faculty volunteers planted more than 500,000 individual plants in various areas <laughs> of the campus. Plants, mulch, and supplies were made possible by sponsors including BASF, LSU Student Government, and Landscape Services. This day provided students with a unique opportunity to serve alongside staff and administrators and learn some sound environmental practices while allowing the university to maximize landscaping resources in a creative way. Please join in congratulating LSU Sustainability for their three wonderful projects. Let me correct one thing, what the 500,000 plants, 50,000 plants, and they're about to start <laughs> renting bikes or you can come, come get a bike, I guess you gotta have a pool of them, right? Yeah, bike share. A bike share, and then um, the, the electronics recycling portion, you know, it's, it's getting tougher now to find a place that will take your electronics. Uh, there's one place out of, out of Texas and then, then you can reuse them. But right after Hurricane Katrina, we actually collected about a million pieces of electronics. Uh, VCRs at the time, uh, TVs, radios, and the first time in history we recycled all of them. Uh, that was the first time now it's a part of what the Corps does, it's a part of what all the response does. So very critical to do those types of things. Last thing last year, LSU won for 
recycling aluminum cans, <coughs> beer cans, uh, soda pop cans, uh, more than any other university in the country. So not only are they doing this, but they're continuing to do those type of activities. So they took me congratulated, LSU. It'll be 500,000 by the end of the year, I'm sure. Compost Now is primarily a volunteer-driven community organization um, with a not-for-profit fiscal sponsor, Friends of the New Orleans Public Library. They are being awarded the ELP Non-Governmental Organization Achievement Award in Community Environmental Outreach. Compost Now hosts free weekly residential food waste collections at area libraries throughout New Orleans. They serve nearly 500 local residents, it is 500, local residents at seven library locations throughout New Orleans. Compost Now offers local residents a free and easy way to keep their food waste out of landfills and turn it into nutrient-rich compost used by local farmers to grow fresh, healthy food. Compost Now partners with the New Orleans Public Library and several local farms. Compost Now piloted the weekly project in January 2017 at just two library sites. By the end of the first year, Compost Now was at five sites and had collected over 35,000 pounds of food waste from local residents. In their second year, Compost Now has already expanded to seven library sites and added a partnering form which has farm animals to feed. Compost Now collects over three tons each month and their goal is to divert 100,000 pounds of food waste from the landfill this year. Please join in congratulating Compost Now on their food waste collections. This is an outstanding project. He's telling me all about it. Uh, reusing food waste is very keen. I'm very keen on that. It's just very hard to, to do. And what she's saying is they do about a ton a week. Uh, and they collect them in these bins. Three large farms they actually will compost it or they will feed it to their, to their animals. So as we all move along in our lives, let's start thinking about how we can grow this type of activity. Food waste at universities, LSU, uh, at, uh, at, at, at every restaurant is huge. What about all the grease guys, uh, sewage and water board? I mean, it's, it's, it's really all tied together. <laughs> and we can find a way to grow this particular piece we talking about some serious sustainability. So as you move along, give us some thoughts on how you can do it. Again, thank you all for submitting um, the projects in the way that you did. Um, we are working to improve that process. Um, it was really helpful the way that you all submitted the projects this year. It helped us to organize it and send it out to the panel of um, members that are the ELP that are part of the ELP Community Steering Committee um, who evaluated those um, projects and, and ranked them as such. Uh, we have a list of those members that are um, on the committee. And of course, if you're interested, I know of anyone who is interested in serving as well, we're always interested in having more people to evaluate the projects too. So I do want to remind you, Dr. Brown, that you did talk about VW. You said you want to speak about VW. I want to give you a little good news. We, we very seldom get a lot of that around here. But this past year or so, we've gotten a lot of items moving that's been sitting for quite a long time. Some of our state implementation plans for SO2 in St. Bernard uh, is submitted and it's going to be approved. Uh, we'll be in attainment the, by the time this year is over in St. Bernard and the entire state for SO2. We've got a, an implementation plan for regional haze. Believe it or not, we've got one coal fire plant in, in Westlake, um, and it impacts Britain Sound. We've got, uh, got that plant submitted. We've got them on board with, with their techniques to actually uh, retrofit their technology, and we won't have any regional haze in Britain Sound as we move along. All of those, those two have been sitting for 10 years. We, we finally got EPA to approve those plants. We know that we've been dealing with ozone for quite a while. Uh, so all of these projects that deal with air quality are all contributing to our success. 
uh, around the five parish area around Baton Rouge, we finally become attainment for the 2008 ozone standard. Now that means that we're breathing the cleanest air around this five parish area since the Industrial Revolution. Now folks can say whatever they want to say, but it is a fact, okay? Now, EPA has moved the needle on us, and now they're about to implement the 2015 standard. So 2008 was 75 parts per billion. We've reached that for every parish in the state. Not only that, we know we have some special summer blending requirements for, at one point, 16 parishes. EPA agreed a few months ago to remove that requirement from 11 parishes. So that meant that there was only five left that was requiring that special blend of gasoline. Well, we, we basically demonstrated to them that we can, can meet the 2008 standard without that requirement in the five parish area, and they agreed. So now, as of last week, we are not required to produce a special blend anywhere in the state of Louisiana. Very key, very, very significant. Now, the 2015 standard, which is 70 parts per billion, where we've been averaging about 72. So when I speak with my counterparts in Washington, I always talk about cost benefit. Natural background is about 65 parts per billion. That just means that the trees that grow in, in our environment is, is, is naturally about 65 parts per billion. So all of the stationary sources have already installed all their control equipment. There's not much more we can get there. So what's left? mobile sort right? We had one exceedance in Covenant, and there's, there's no industry in Covenant. There's only, there's only coal. So we're gonna get some significant reductions from mobile sources, maybe. So it's a matter of what do we have to do, how much do we have to spend, how much time in order to get that final two. Well, we've demonstrated over the last three years that we can, we can reach 70. And we had one event last fall that caused us to not be in attainment for the 70 parts per billion, one event. And we think it was something that was out of our control. They had the fires in the Northwest. We think we had the perfect weather pattern. We, we've got a model that shows that particular matter came from the Northwest. It, it fell down to the ground in Lake Charles. And you can see it making its way all the way across the state including the Baton Rouge area. So we asked EPA to give us consideration for an exceptional event. And it looks like they're going to do it. Okay? Now that's very significant. So that means that we're going to be in attainment for the 2015 ozone standard. That means that every parish in the state will have the cleanest air that we've had since the Industrial Revolution. Very significant. Uh, and you would never think that EPA would agree with our models and our theories, but they have. It looks like we're going to have that signed off on of soon. Excuse me, once it's published, then it'll hear me saying this over and over. So you guys are actually some of the first ones besides uh, our folks in the government that hear this. So everything we do to contribute to the clean air is, it all adds up. So the Volkswagen settlement, and then I'm going to let you all go home is we all knew that in 2016, Volkswagen, they settled with the Department of Justice, basically saying they, over, they <coughs> underestimated their emissions from their diesel engines. So $4.3 billion settlement. Based on the amount of diesel engines you had in the state at the time, you got your share of that money. Well, Louisiana's share was about 18 million. California gets 800 million. Okay, big difference. But you would think our 18 million was worth 800 million because I got, use this for the money, use this with the money, use that with the money. So we sat internally and we talked about getting the best bang for the buck. And one of the things that we're probably going to end up doing is we're going to assist local school systems with replacing their old buses with alternative fuel buses. Uh, our plan. <laughs> really good. Um, we're going to have a plan public notice by the end of the week. So if you see it out there, look at it, give me some comments on it. Um, we're going to go through a round of solicitations over three years. So if you don't, if
if your school system doesn't, doesn't win this year, have them submit again next year. But right now we're looking at if you buy a propane or a compressed natural gas bus, we're going to give you 50% of the cost. If you replace your old diesel buses with high efficiency, <coughs> we're going to give you 25% of the cost. So uh, we're going to be soliciting later this year, but I want you to put your comments in on, on the plan. So Volkswagen, everything is a combination. We also are, we also have created clean energy corridors. I-20 from Mississippi to Texas, I-49 south to Lafayette from Shreveport, and I-10 from Texas to Mississippi. You're gonna start seeing the signs. They've been designated clean energy corridors. Two things there. One is we're encouraging public-private partnerships when it comes to, to these fueling stations. My goal is to, when you pull into a racetrack or a love truck stop, that you can get gas, you can get diesel, you can plug in, you can buy propane or press natural gas. I want you to be able to get it off. People ask, <coughs> why does, uh, I tell the oil and gas guys, we're never gonna go out of business. You can always need oil and gas, but if I were you, I'd be investing in a better battery because we're gonna be plugging in and doing what we need to do. As a matter of fact, I'm encouraging all the state agencies to put at least one as a vehicle in their fleet. Uh, I know the port has has two. They told me that when I come down, I'm gonna take a ride around the, around the, my tour in it. Uh, but we're about to put one in our fleet in, in July. Uh, we've talked with charging stations. And a part of the Volkswagen settlement is a, a, pro a project called Electrify America. So they pick 16 cities that they're going to install these quick charge stations. So if you plug your car into a normal charging station, you get about three miles per minute. With these quick charge, fast charge, you get 20 miles per minute, okay? Now they, they require a lot of power, they require strategic locations, so Louisiana's on the list to, to get some of these, 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 these charging stations. But these charging stations are not just some place you pull in. They're gonna be restaurants, they're gonna be parks, they're gonna be areas that while you're waiting that 30 minutes to charge up your car, you got something to do. People ask me, why would Walmart want to put a charging station out in front of their Murphy gas station? Well, if it takes you 45 minutes to charge up, what are you going to be doing? You're going to be in Walmart shopping. So it's a win-win for everybody. That's where we're going. That's my vision. There's room for everything. Even the oil and gas guy that realized that. And uh, uh, as we do grow, as we move forward, clean air, uh, sustainability, and alternative fuels are going to be very high on our list. So, again, thank you all for coming. Thank you for participating. I look forward to seeing you guys next year. Bigger, better projects. Look at the projects that were here and see how you can do it or how you can help them get even better. And we'll give you recognition for that. So thank you all for coming. I'm here to talk about our, here to get a award on our P2 at Fort Polk. What we do is uh, try to reuse, recycle, re reduce all our waste, try to eliminate waste to the landfill. So far, we've been successful at diverting 50% of our waste from the landfill. And we, we'll continue to come up with new ways to uh, do a culture change. We're trying to change the culture at Fort Polk because you know, recycling is something that we've been needing to do, but it's nobody been really pushing it. And now we're trying to change the culture of uh, letting people know that all oh, this is resources that we can use. Instead of just throwing it away or whatever, we can reuse these things and uh, save the environment. How long has this program been going on? Well, we, we became a pilot installation back in 2014. So we've been working on this since then. And uh, it's been getting better and better each year, you know, reaching out, get, converting more people over to that recycling mind, that reuse mind. So it's, it's, it's been improving. It's a great, great program we have over there for folks. Is there a website or any kind of contact person that people can reach out to to find out about more of what Fort Polk is doing? Yes, yeah, so on the Fort Polk website, we have a, a, our a Net Zero website, and we also have a Facebook page that they can go on the Fort Polk website, and you'll find all our stuff about Net Zero Waste right there on uh, the website. Sure. So Compost Now is basically a food waste collection program. We partner with the New Orleans Public Library, and we offer seven free weekly residential food waste drop-offs at the different libraries. So people freeze their scraps at home, they bring them to us, 
We partner with local farms who then either feed the food waste to their farm animals or turn it into nutrient-rich compost that is used on those farms. We divert close to a ton of food waste every week, so our goal this year is 100,000 pounds diverted from the landfill. Okay, and if people want to know more about your program, where's the website? What, where's the best place to get information? Sure, so our website is compost-now.org. We also have a very active Facebook page, so Compost Now, Compost New Orleans Waste. That's really the best way to reach us, or go to your local library in New Orleans and you'll probably see a flyer. Well, we are privileged today to accept the Environmental Leadership Program Award. This is for our Clean Trip Program which we just closed out one phase of. And what this program does is provide funding for truck drivers, that's independent owners and small fleet owners, to receive $35,000 or up to half the cost, whichever is smaller, of replacing their truck. Now these are the typical tractor trailer trucks that you see on roads all over the place. Uh, they can replace that truck with one with a cleaner burning model of diesel engine. So this reduces emissions of all kinds, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, particulates, and that just, uh, in general, when you have a large fleet of trucks like this, and uh, we replaced 40 trucks uh, that service the Port of New Orleans, so this offers a huge benefit to local air quality. Is there any other information? Is there a website link? Get, where can we find out more about the Port of New Orleans, you know, environmental activities? So the best place is uh, just the Port of New Orleans website. You can just Google Port of New Orleans and look for the environmental tab, which will tell you all about the Clean Trip program and all of our other initiatives that we're taking on over at the port. Long term, we all, we all do our part. And so the very little pieces all add up to big pieces. I told a group today about some air quality issues that, uh, that everybody's had a, a, a part in, uh, in making successful. Since 1984, we've been trying to reach attainment uh, for ozone in the five parish area. Well, we finally are, are at that point, and everybody had a, a, a piece in that. You know, we're driving high efficiency vehicles now. We understand that what ozone action days meant. You don't feel your 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 lawnmowers doing uh, doing the midday hours. So everybody does their their piece, and we try to do something positive here in recognizing what they do and let them know it's not in vain.